Hey everybody, it's Eric. So if you use Z shell in your terminal, then you're probably familiar with OhMyZSH. So OhMyZSH is basically a framework that will get you up and running with Z shell. It'll install a bunch of themes and plugins and just kind of take care of all of that for you. Now, for a lot of people, OhMyZShell is basically equivalent to ZShell because whenever you go to a tutorial or like a YouTube video explaining how to set up ZShell, they pretty much always have installing OhMyZSH as like a first step to customizing everything. And that's what I did as well whenever I first got into ZShell. So I basically downloaded ZShell, set it up, and then installed OhMyZShell right after. But the thing is, you don't really need OhMyZSH. Oh, oh my ZSH. Uh, and I kind of wanted to explain that everything that all oh, oh my ZSH does, you can basically do by yourself just as easily, if not easier. So the reason why you might not want oh my ZSH, I mean, it seems pretty convenient. You don't have to do any setup work yourself. You can just have it do everything for you. But the problem with oh my ZSH is, is it's like, a lot of code just to do some very simple things and it can get like pretty slow because it's so bloated so the problem I was having is like previously using bash I just start on my terminal and it would just the prompt would be right there ready to type so it's pretty much instant but with oh my ZSH and a few plugins installed it was taking like a long time to actually start up so whenever I'd open a terminal it would take like half a second or like one second before I could actually type anything. It just seemed like very laggy. Now maybe like half a second or a second, it, it doesn't seem like much if you're not opening that many terminals. But it just got me thinking like, okay, what's going on behind the scenes that's, take, that's making it take so long just to start up a simple ZSH prompt? So it got me kind of thinking and looking through all my ZSH to see exactly what it did. So you don't really need all my ZSH for much because let me show you what it does. So the main use for all my ZSH is installing a bunch of useful plugins and most people use it as kind of a plugin manager. So let's say you want to install a new ZSH plugin like ZSH syntax highlighting. You want to have these nice syntax highlights. So uh, you might look at this and be like, okay, I need some kind of plugin manager for this. So you go to oh my ZSH and then everywhere you go to that says install, you just look for the, how to install with oh my ZSH. Oh, oh my ZSH is here. Easy. Because I've, everybody recommends it, so I'm already using oh my ZSH. But I wanted to kind of show you that oh my ZSH doesn't really do anything that you can't easily do yourself. So basically what oh my ZSH is doing is it's copying this repo to the, the oh my ZSH folder into plugins and then what you do is you add that plugin into your little plugins line here in your ZSHRC. Now that's pretty much almost what you do if you're doing it manually without oh my ZSH. So I don't have oh my ZSH on mine, I'm just going to do it manually. So up here you can say in your .zshrc you're basically doing almost the same thing. First, you git clone this. Uh, you don't clone it into the ZSH directory. You can basically put it wherever you want. So I have it in home slash dot config slash ZSH. That's where I keep all my plugins and then the folder that we want to put it in. So that's where I put all my ZSH plugins. And you can see that by going in here, uh, go into ZSH syntax ID highlighting. And yeah, I've just copied everything from this repo in here. And so you might look at all these things in this repo and be like, okay, that's kind of a lot of things. I probably need a plugin manager to like help me set all this up. But if you look inside the, the main plugin, all it is is it's basically just, uh, it's basically just Z shell script. So all of this, you can basically just put inside your ZSHRC and it'll run and it'll run fine. So let's see how they recommend to install it right here. So they're saying you just need to source the location to the ZSH syntax highlighting folder 
and then zsh syntax highlighting dot z cell. So that's the script up here that we saw. It's basically just saying, just load in this to your zshrc. So what I have, I'm going to open up my zshrc. Hold up, I'm not in my home directory. Okay, so let me go down to the bottom here. And yeah, basically all I'm doing here is I'm sourcing home.config, uh, my ZSH auto suggestions plugin. Down here I have my ZSH syntax highlighting, ZSH syntax highlighting dot ZSH. So basically you're adding all this line instead of what you do with oh my ZSH, which is just adding it inside this little plugins parenthesis thing. So it's basically the same amount of work. You're basically copying and pasting a command into your ZSHRC, and there's no really there's no real reason to use oh my ZSH to do that. It's just like it's just like kind of abstracting it away when you can just easily do it yourself. You don't have to have somebody like pull the strings behind the scenes in order to do something so basic. And another thing that oh my ZSH does is it adds themes for you. So let's open up one of these theme files and see what's inside. So let's see, this one right here. Oh my ZSH comes with a bunch of themes. So this is one of the default themes that it comes with. And if you look at this zsh theme file right here, well, this is basically just more Z shell code. So if you want to, you can just copy this into your Z shell RC and it'll do exactly the same thing. So I'm using, I'm using the theme power level 10 K dot Z shell theme, and it's exactly the same process. So what you do is you just get clone that. Uh, so I'm get cloning power level 10 K into dot config slash Z shell slash power level 10 K. And then you saw in my dot Z shell RC, all I'm doing is all I'm doing is just sourcing it right here. So, um, yeah, I'm just sourcing the theme right here. I don't need oh my ZSH to do something for me to do it. It's super basic. So you just put in this line right here to source it, and you're done. So with something so simple, you don't really need oh my ZSH to do all this for you. It's pretty simple to do this yourself. Just set it up like that. I mean, the only reason to really use oh my ZSH is if you if you really can't be bothered to do this yourself. Like, you can't paste a couple of lines in here. You don't want to find a directory for Z shell plugins yourself. But in my opinion, it's just such little work to do that I'd rather just do it manually than have oh my ZSH do it for me. And then the problem with oh my ZSH is it makes your prompt slower. Like, it's noticeably slow when you start it up. It's like a second or half a second. And it just seemed to me like there was no point in using oh my ZSH to do this for me. Uh, but I mean, it's, it's good for beginners. Like, that's the reason I used it because I didn't really know how to set up Z shell myself at all. But after seeing how simple it is, like even a beginner to Z shell can do this. It's nothing crazy. You just open up your .zshrc in your home directory and paste in the commands. And besides that. ZSH, oh my ZSH doesn't really do anything that you can't do yourself. I mean, it has a couple of features that, I don't know, if anybody would use these, you can make your ZSH theme random if you ever wanted to do that. I don't know why we'd want to do that. But that's basically the only thing it has over use, just doing it yourself. And with oh my ZSH, with oh my ZSH you're getting all these plugins that you don't really need. Like, I'm kind of capable of installing my own plugins that I know that I need instead of a whole bunch of stuff that I won't ever really need. Another thing about all my ZSH is a lot of the plugins it has, they aren't even really plugins. All they are are like aliases. So whenever I installed all my ZSH myself, it came with all these git aliases. And I thought that was useful. But then I looked through this file myself and it's just a bunch of aliases that you can add to your own ZSHRC file or just like an alias file that you can source. So I'm not going to use all of these anyway. Like 
there's some down here that I would definitely never use. Uh, if I did have to use them, I'd just type out the full command. I wouldn't remember like G, C, D, or something like that. So basically all I do is I just copy the ones that I really need and then put it in my own ZSHRC instead of having all this bloat that I'm never ever gonna use, honestly. I'll look through this, 90% of this I will never touch in my life. So there's not really any point in doing that either. Now, if you wanna use all my ZSH, there's nothing wrong with that, but just know that it's gonna make it slower and it's something that you don't really need done for you, you know what I mean? I, but if you really don't wanna like do all this yourself, if you really wanna have like some plugin manager do it for you, there's a lot of other plugin managers uh, besides oh my ZSH. Oh my ZSH is kind of like a framework, whereas uh, plugin management is only one part of it. And you can just download like an individual like plugin manager just to do that for you. So there's a whole bunch of Z Shell plugin managers. I personally don't use them because it's easier just to do it manually. I don't mind the small bit of hassle. But if you want, you can use Zplug or Z plugin, Z init. There's a whole list of a whole bunch of ZSH plugin managers. I like this post. It's kind of like compar comparing uh, how fast it takes to load whenever you initially start up your ZSH. So if you want something that's really fast and doesn't slow down your system, then I would take a look at this. I mean, personally, I mean, this one recommends using Z plugin, Z init. So it's pretty simple to install. Like you just go here install this instead. Maybe it's a bit less newbie friendly, like something like oh my ZSH would be. Really, you'd be doing a lot better using something like Z init or Z plug than something bloated like oh my ZSH uh, is way more than you need it to do. So that's what I recommend if I were you. Just do it yourself. There's no real reason to do oh my ZSH. And if you're one of the people who have noticed your shell being slower ever since you installed this thing, then just know that it doesn't have to be that way. Ever since I stopped using all my ZSH, it's just been a lot nicer. It's just like one of those small like quality of life improvements that it, it just annoys you whenever it takes a little bit to start up your seashell prompt. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm stressing too much about this, but you know, that's what I like to do. It's fun. All right, so if this video was helpful to you, leave it a like, subscribe, something like that. That would be nice. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.